On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong's legendary first lunar steps would inspire generations to dream of exploring the furthest reaches of space. And then, it all came to a screeching halt. Here we are nearly 50 years later, no moon colonies, no intergalactic space travel. But just when it looked like the moon would fade away, a silo-shaped beacon of hope began to shine on the horizon. That's right, with NASA awarding a nearly $3 billion contract to SpaceX, the moon is definitely on its way to a comeback. As exciting as the news is, it does beg a few questions like, why did it take us so long to get back to the moon? Why did we stop going in the first place? And if we've already been to the moon, does it even matter if we go back? We thought these questions deserved a deeper dive here on 2-Bit Da Vinci. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Special thanks to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. Visit privateinternetaccess.com slash 2 Vinci to save 78% on a stellar VPN service today. July 20th, 2019 marked the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing, one of the greatest achievements in all of human history. It marked what many Earthlings assumed would be a new era of exploration for humankind. But what was once the hottest destination in the solar system has suddenly become the Jan Brady of space, the dejected middle child who is sick of hearing nothing but Mars, Mars, Mars. In fact, it's been over half a century since the last human ever set foot on the lunar surface. You know what sends my heart soaring to the moon? Hitting that like button. It's one small click for you, one giant leap for our channel. During the 50s, 60s, and 70s, the entire world was obsessed with the moon. The world's superpowers poured endless money into winning the space race. At one point, the Apollo program constituted 4% of the entire US federal budget. So why haven't we been back to the moon in so long? One of the biggest factors keeping humans earthbound isn't gravity, but money. Almost immediately after America established its victory over the Russians, all the funding quickly dried up. Plus, by the early 70s, bogged down by the Vietnam War, a global oil crisis, and a teetering economy, the US government found itself struggling to justify spending money on space. And that's pretty much been the pattern ever since. Anytime the economy struggles, NASA becomes the punching bag. After all, spaceflight ain't cheap. It's why until recently, only the largest economic superpowers in the world could even toy with the idea. During its heyday, the Apollo program cost about $482 billion when adjusted for inflation. Even the shuttle program, which was intended to replace the Apollo program and lower the cost of spaceflight, still cost a whopping $209 billion, averaging to about $1.6 billion per launch. Scientists will argue that you can't put a price on knowledge, but the world's governments do it all the time. And speaking of the government, Yet another roadblock for lunar travel has been political whiplash. Space travel is all about the long game. The Apollo program, for instance, spread across five different presidencies, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, and Ford. Unfortunately, politicians tend to be a bit more nearsighted than scientists. In today's climate, it's hard to invest hope in an endeavor that may be completely abandoned in four years. In 2004, the Bush administration tried replacing the shuttle program with the Constellation program, which involved using a rocket called Ares and a ship called Orion to develop permanent lunar outposts. Once Obama came into office, priorities shifted from the moon to Mars and even asteroids, with money funneled into new multi-purpose rockets and spaceships like the Space Launch System. The Trump administration once again pulled focus back to the moon, and so far the Biden administration seems to be continuing in that vein. More on that in a second. But all this back and forth over the decades has basically halted the ability to go back to the moon. Now, it's not like NASA has just been sitting around on their hands doing nothing. Of course, they've made incredible progress. And a lot of the technology they've developed along the way will help us in future space exploration. But if we're being honest with ourselves, what we really want to see is NASA astronauts setting foot on a celestial body besides Earth. But we have some good news. As we speak, NASA has plans to begin lunar missions as early as the year 2021 with the goal of putting humans back on the moon by 2024. That's not that far away. Of course, when these plans began in 2017, NASA didn't have a deadline in mind, thinking the project could take multiple decades. That was all placed into overdrive. President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence, who set a hard deadline. Boots on the moon by 2024. Changing the trajectory from decades to years meant NASA would have significantly less time to cover quite a bit of space. 
But this kind of hardline thinking lit the rockets under NASA's butt during the Apollo years when President Kennedy famously promised to go to the moon within a decade. The current mission is called Artemis, named after the Greek goddess of the hunt and the moon, and twin sister of Apollo. The goal is to send people to the lunar south pole, a feat that we've never done before. Of course, when Trump set his 2024 deadline, he assumed he'd get a second term in office. Fortunately, the Biden administration also seems to fully support the endeavor. Recent budget proposals saw nearly $25 billion allocated to funding these lunar missions, a 6% increase over the previous year. Of course, part of the motivation could be the fact that America is not the only country eyeing the moon these days. Before we get back to the show, let me tell you about Private Internet Access VPN. You've probably noticed a lot of 3D animation on our channel, and while that requires some serious hardware, I recently bought a second NVIDIA RTX 3090 for rendering, but had to buy it from a scalper since they're all sold out. He told me to meet him somewhere public so I wouldn't know where he lives, but he was communicating with me from his home Wi-Fi network, and knowing his IP address, I could have figured it out. And that's the rub. We're good at protecting our physical information like address, but largely neglect our digital identities. Using private internet access VPN is the equivalent of meeting someone in a random place. A VPN service routes your internet traffic through some other location, making it look to the world like you're somewhere you're not. If you use public Wi-Fi at all, you must consider a VPN service. I love private internet access because with a yearly plan, you can protect up to 10 devices. So whether you pull out your iPad, your laptop, or your phone, you're covered. Plus, you can safely watch your content from streaming services wherever you go and secure your downloads. Also, hop on a VPN connection in other countries when shopping online for things like tickets. You might be surprised at the differences in price. Our viewers who use our special link in the description, privateinternetaccess.com slash Davinci, can get the plan I have for two years, plus an extra three months for 78% off. As of right now, nearly half a dozen countries, including China, India, Russia, the European Space Agency, and even Israel, all have moon missions planned in the works. And that's not even including the private interests who have also caught cases of moon fever. In fact, many of these private companies, <clears throat> SpaceX, have been astronomical in bringing down the cost of space flight. While not all these missions are intended to be human piloted, the reality is we're on the brink of yet another global space race. So great, we're going back to the moon, but how exactly will we get there? The first thing we'll need is a big rocket. During the Obama administration, NASA began working on the SLS, the Space Launch System, which when completed, will be the biggest, most powerful rocket the agency has ever used, taking the crown from the GOAT Saturn V. While NASA does intend to use the SLS on later Artemis missions, unfortunately, SLS isn't quite ready, and we have a deadline. Boots on the moon, 2024. I can see the bumper stickers. What other massive space rocket could we use for the job? Oh, I know, how about everyone's favorite flying water tower, Starship? To get a deeper dive on Starship, <clears throat> shameless plug, check out our video we did here. Last year, NASA awarded contracts to three companies to design landers that could carry humans to the moon. Between SpaceX, Dynetics, and Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, SpaceX ultimately won out. Which is great, but we will need an Amazon distribution center on the moon eventually, so. Jeff, hopefully you're still working on that. SpaceX still has to perform an uncrewed landing to fully check out all systems with a landing on the lunar surface before NASA decides to put humans in it. But still, a major win not just for SpaceX, but for NASA too. Besides a massive rocket, the crew will also need a new space capsule. The Orion spacecraft, which was originally designed under the Bush administration, is designed to carry up to four astronauts for up to 21 days. It'll have large acrylic windows so astronauts can watch the journey, kind of like a space minivan. <laughs> Maybe the coolest thing in development is the Gateway Lunar Command Module, essentially a space station that will orbit the moon itself. Astronauts would fly from Earth to the Gateway, then use a lunar lander to get from the Gateway down to the surface of the moon. The earliest stages of Artemis are set to take place this year in 2021, and so far the goal remains the same, boots on the moon by 2024. But Ricky, you ask, why does it really even matter if we go to the moon or not? Haven't we already been there and done that? Purely from a scientific perspective, the moon is a treasure trove of data. Unlike the Earth, whose fossil and mineral records have been tainted over the millennia by tectonic activity and weather and, you know, humans, the surface of the moon has remained completely unchanged for over 3 billion years. 
Samples collected during the Apollo era helped us understand more about the Earth, as well as the Moon's possible origins. These samples are still helping produce scientific papers even to this day. This current mission to explore the Moon's South Pole could provide even more data on the history of our planet and our solar system. And besides all that sciencey stuff, the Moon will be instrumental in helping humans eventually get to Mars. The International Space Station is approximately 400 kilometers above the Earth. The Moon orbits about 1,000 times further than that, at 400 100,000 kilometers. Mars is about 4 million kilometers from Earth. What we learn on and around the moon will be instrumental in helping humans to take the next giant leap into deeper space. But if that still doesn't sell you on the moon, let's look at a few reasons that pertain to us right now here on our current planet. As of right now, a total of 12 human beings have ever set foot on the moon. With the Artemis mission, NASA has made a promise to not just send more men to the moon, but to send the first female astronaut to the moon. Returning to the moon isn't just a big deal for scientists. It's an opportunity for humanity to reach to higher potential, not as nations, not as corporations, but as a species. Of the 12 original moonwalkers, only four are still alive. If we don't get back to the moon soon, we may find ourselves in a world where no living human has first-hand experience encountering another world. That knowledge, those legacies, they're too precious to lose. These forthcoming moon missions could prove to be some of the most vital endeavors in all of human history, kicking open the door of possibility and sparking a new era of space travel for all of humanity. Now, that seems worthwhile, right? You can't really put a price tag on optimism and hope. And that's exactly what happened around the world during the first space race. People looked up at their television sets and watched live pictures from the moon. You can't tell me that children didn't grow up thinking, I wanna be an astronaut, get their engineering degrees, start companies and do cool stuff around the world. And at this point in our civilization in 2021, post pandemic or mid pandemic, I think a little bit of optimism and dreaming and looking up to the moon is is exactly what the doctor ordered. So what do you guys think? What do you make of all this? And are you excited or do you think it's a waste of money? Which camp do you fall into? I wanna say thank you to all of our viewers as always for watching. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons on Patreon and our YouTube channel members. We couldn't do this show without all of you guys and your support. So if you wanna be a rockstar supporter of the show, consider joining us on Patreon or join that YouTube membership community. Thank you so much for watching. As always, we have tons of other videos that we think you will like. And until next time, I'm Ricky and this is 2-Bit Da Vinci.